Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasurer. My name is Jeff Pospisil, and my hope in these videos is that you're going to find some practical advice for improving your church's financial future. This video is going to be a little bit more focused on uh, the Dakota United Methodists, as I'm going to be talking about the Clean Bio Grants and how they work. Uh, if so, if you're not Dakota's United Methodist, you can go ahead and listen and maybe even share it with your own foundation and maybe they'll, they'll like the idea and implement it because we've uh, really, really found this to be a great program here in the Dakotas. So the origin of these Klingbile grants comes from uh, Maynard Klingbile, who's pictured on the left here. Maynard, he was a very faithful United Methodist lived in the small town of Oneida, South Dakota, which is near the center of South Dakota, population probably 650. And um, when he passed away last year, he left a good sized gift to the foundation and it was undesignated. And uh, I think it was Kelsey Morgan was the one that came up with the idea of maybe we should use this money to provide grants for new accounts with the foundation and our board of directors they liked it and so we've run with it to be able to offer grants for new accounts so we offer two different types of grants the first one is the clean bio legacy grant and that's if a church establishes a new endowment uh, they're going to get a 10 percent grant right towards the principal and the maximum grant amount is twenty five thousand dollars so uh, you might have a question what's an endowment so if your church received a gift you know usually it's a legacy gift where you can only spend the earnings or the interest of it um, that's an endowment so you're, you're not able to touch the principal but you are able to spend the earnings on it so that's what we're talking about so if you already have one or maybe you received one recently um, you could go ahead and establish a new endowment and i'm going to just show you the math on how that works so let's go ahead and look at three different scenarios on how this actually works. So let's just say uh, a church started a $10,000 endowment and another one started a $100,000 endowment and another one started a million dollar endowment. What would their grant amounts be? And so it, this is some of the easiest math you're gonna have because you just move that decimal point over one. So 10,000 gets a $1,000 grant, 100,000 gets a $10,000 grant, the only exception is if your endowment is over $250,000, you're gonna get capped at that $25,000 grant. But the nice thing is this is added to your account the same day we receive the deposit. So we get a check for $10,000, immediately that turns into 11, you know, and the 100 turns into 110 and the million turns into a million 25. So immediately it turns into that. And I said before that, um, these are like accounts where you skim off the, the interest or the earnings. We manage our endowments so that we do 4.5% of the average balance. So what does that turn into as an annual check back to the church? So the distribution for the 10000 would be right around 495 The one for the $100,000 one would be right around 4950 And the million dollar one would be 46125 and this distribution, the very first distribution will be paid out in January of 2023. So we, we, I'm recording this in 2021. So we would we let those endowments accrue some earnings over a course of a year. And then we do uh, the distributions that next January after a full year of earnings. So that's how that works. Um, part of the reason we do this is we do wanna grow the money because we get a pretty good rate of return. So our average return is right around that 78%. Um, this is what it's been for about as long as I've been. Uh, when you look at the 10 year return, we invest it in the growth fund. And so it, it's kind of aggressive in the growth, but that's because we want to grow it over the long term. Because as we grow it, um, I said we're distributing about 4.5%. So that we're trying to grow that principle as well. And so that way your principal will grow, your distributions will grow. And so that after 10 years, then what would your, what would your endowment look like? So that $10,000 endowment should be in the range of $14,000. You know, if it's gonna keep up with inflation, it's gotta be at least $13,000 after 10 years, you know, and then your distributions would have grown from being right around $500 to being around $600. And same deal for, you know, your $100,000, that's grown to $145,000 and a $6,000 distribution. And, and your million dollar one has grown quite a bit as well. And uh, just the benefit of this versus if you would have put it at a CD, your $10,000 one would still be $10,000.
you know, uh, your $100,000 one would still be $100,000 and the value of it would have just dropped and the distributions would, would not be nearly as generous either if you're just keeping it in a CD. The second type of grant is the Clean Bile Investors Grant, and that's for churches that establish a new investment account with us. So an investment account is, is like a savings account that you can deposit money in and withdraw money in, and it's going to earn income on it because it's, it's invested. So, And they're going to get a grant of 2% for the first three years, so a total of 6%. Uh, this grant is capped at the first $75,000 you invest in that account, and there are some restrictions on that, and I'll talk about that later. So I want to go over three scenarios again. So if the church set up a $10,000 investment account or a $50,000 or a $200,000 investment account, what would that grant amount be? So for the $10,000 one, it would be $600, but it, it would come at $200 per year, so over the first three years. $50,000, again, it would be $3,000, but it's going to be $1,000 a year. And then anything over seven, uh, $75,000, you're going to be capped out at the max grant amount of $4,500, which is $1,500 per year. And that may not sound like a tremendous amount, but I mean, it's an, an instant 2%. So um, over, if you had a CD, it would take you about two years to get 2%. So this, your $10,000 is immediately turning into $10,200. And there are some investment options. So it's not like the endowments where it's all just put into one fund and you don't have any choice. There are options that with this one. So with the foundation, whenever you set up a new investment account, you get three different funds to choose from. One is the growth, uh, which is about 60% equities, so stocks, and 40% uh, fixed income, so bonds and that kind of investment. Uh, balanced is 50-50 and fixed income is 100% fixed income. So that bonds and that kind of thing. And the average return on those will vary. So I, I am going to leave a link in the description to um, to our fund descriptions, which will give you the historical earnings on that, as well as a little bit more detail on how those are invested. But the growth one right now, it's averaging right around 8%. Fixed income is right around 4%. And I believe the balanced is at around 7%. Um, the question is, you know, what kind of restrictions? How available is this money? How quick can we get it if we need it? So the, these funds are going to be restricted a lot less than with the CD. So with the CD, if you pull that money before it matures, you're going to get a penalty. Well, with these, you can pull the money. Um, all of it's available to you, although we highly, highly discourage churches from pulling money the first year. Our, our funds are made for long-term investments. You know, we're looking at that three to five year window. And so that's why we do have that one restriction on this grant that if you pull more than just the earnings in the first three years, you're going to forfeit the grant. So um, that's, that's a restriction because we really want churches to think about long-term investing with these funds. There, there might be a workaround. So let's just say, you know, that, um, you want to invest $50,000, but you think you're going to need $10,000 this next year. Well, let's just go ahead and say that your initial deposit, uh, communicate that with the Dakota's United Methodist Foundation, that your initial deposit is $40,000. And then we could base that grant off of there. And so you're going to get $800 a year, um, and you're not going to have as much risk of losing that grant than either if you have to tap into that $10,000. How quick can you get it? Um, so really, normally the turnaround is less than 10 days, but we usually say uh, within 10 business days, we'll be able to get it to you no matter what size of money. So if you got a million dollars with us, yeah, a million dollars, we'll get that to you in 10 business days. Uh, if you're asking for $600, likely it'll be only five or six business days would be the longest. So, all right. I hope that has been a help to you. And again, if you're not with the Dakotas United Methodist, I, uh, you can go ahead and bug your own foundation, maybe show them this video. Maybe they'll they'll consider doing something similar because I think it's been a really good program. We've had quite a few churches come on board. Um, if you are Dakota's United Methodist and you're interested, I'll leave some links to some contact information. Sherry or Diane uh, could help you, and they're, they're more than happy to visit with your church and hopefully answer more of your questions more thoroughly than I did in this short video. God bless you.